Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I have probably the most requested colored pencil video that um, that I've probably ever done. So um, this is the Brute Fluner set of 520 pencils. They're in this uh, box that I made. I have a tutorial on my channel using Dollar Tree crates. So if you want to whip yourself up one of these to store either your colored pencils or um, maybe ink sprays or dye bottles or bottles of ink or whatever you have, this is a really fun tutorial and it's really cheap. So if you want to go check that out, it's on my channel. But anyway, uh, today we're going to talk about the Brute Fluner 520 set of oily colored pencils. And um, Pencils. Oh, that sounds fancy, like Target instead of Target. You want some pencils? We're gonna color with our pencils and be all fancy. Um, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is not how they come, obviously. They come in boxes, but I highly urge you, if you've got a huge set of pencils like this, it is much better to have them out like this, where you can easily see what you have. So I was very overwhelmed when I first um, received the pencils in the mail, so I have a little backstory on the pencils. I reviewed the Brute Fooner set of 120 square pencils um, a couple months ago, and this is what they look like here. And this is my pick for budget pencils. If you're looking for pencils on a budget, I really recommend this set. They are very soft, very blendable. I prefer a softer, blendable pencil myself. They're almost kind of waxy feeling. Um, they're just uh, wonderful to use in the fashion that I like to draw. Um, it might not be what you like. I personally prefer a softer pencil. I use Prismacolors more often than anything else. Prismacolor, Derwent Light Fast, Derwent Color Soft, Derwent Chroma Flow. Those pencils are the ones that I really feel the most comfortable using and that I enjoy the feel of the most. So keep that in mind as, um, as I'm doing this review because you may have different preferences than me. I also want to disclose, I did buy the set of 120 pencils that I re uh, reviewed, and then I was, um, when I reviewed that pencil, that pencil set, people kept asking me, have you have you seen that 500 set, or do you know this is a 520 set? And I didn't know what they were talking about, I'd never heard of them. Uh, the only thing I had known of was there was a 180 set of Brute Fooners that had black barrels and colored tips that were round on the same listing as where I got the, the square ones. And, um, and, I, and I heard they were different, so I didn't even bother with them because um, I heard they were very similar to a lot of the other pencils that look similar that are sold on Amazon. Um, but when people were talking about these 500 ones, I'm like, are they talking about, because I knew there were some square pencils out of Japan um, that were available by pres uh, subscription, <laughs> by prescription. <laughs> I prescribe, you take 12 colored pencils and call me in the morning. Um, and uh, so I'm like, I, that, those aren't the same thing. Uh, but people were saying that there were a Brute Funner 520 set. And I looked it up and they were round. So I was like, oh, I don't know. They're probably not the same. And then um, a lot of people kept asking me, are you going to review those? Are you going to review those? And honestly, I didn't have any inclination to, but the... Um, the stationery shop and Stell stationery on AliExpress reached out to me and asked me if I would like to have a set of the 520 pencils for free to review. And um, I'm like, well, people are asking me for it. I will accept because I, to be honest, it's not something I would have bought. Um, so I did want to make, let you know that I received those pencils for free to review. Um, I was not compensated any, any other way. And if you buy them, I don't get a kickback or anything. So um Hey, do with that what you will. Um, I always just like to be upfront. I never do paid reviews, but I occasionally will accept free product for review. So I just want to let you know that. Um, so I wasn't out any coin to review these pencils. Um, so this is how they come. They come in two boxes that are this size. And you've got odds in one number in one box and you've got evens in the other. So it's pretty much a pretty well balanced set. So if you wanted to just buy once, if you liked it, and if you liked it, buy the other one, that'd probably be, honestly... I think there's a little savings if you get them both at once, but uh, that would be a way to go. They actually have smaller sets. I think a set of 48 is like 14 bucks. So if you wanted to try a smaller set, if you like them, which would honestly be the smart way to go, um, you could do that. So I'm just going to show you because the insides are virtually the same. You got 10 trays in each one, and um, I don't know how well the box would hold up if you store them in there because I can see. I think the cardboard would get a little. Um, damaged, but they do lock into the case. So when they arrived, they were, uh, they were very securely in that case, um, which I think is really nice. And that way, if you do want to store them, you do have a nice, um, you do have a nice place to keep them. 
but it's very, very frustrating to have these in here. You'd have to spread trays out everywhere. It would be very impractical. So I think if you're going to use these, you want to get jars or build a case like I did to um, have them out. Uh, just because it would be so frustrating. I mean, how would you manage that? How would you manage? I can barely manage two or three trays. Like when I've got a set of 72, I barely know what to do with those two trays when I'm working like from my Derwent's. Um, my Prismacolors, I keep in a tray like that. And, I, and that's probably why I use them the most because I got my Prismacolors in the spice rack. I got my Prismacolors on this side, my collar race that I use under watercolors and marker art, and then I have um, a variety of, um, these are actually, these are quite wonderful. They're the um, Spectrum Noir Aqua Blend, and I have some Albright drawers in there, and a couple super colors, I think. So I use these because they're always out and they're always handy. They're not the best pencils, they're not my favorite pen. Well, I, I do Prism Light, Derwent Light Fast is my favorite, but that's kind of like the little black dress, and these are kind of like the comfy, you know, jeans and t-shirt that you wear every day. You just feel good in them and use them all the time. That's what these these are here. They're not the best quality I have of supplies, but they're kind of my tried and true ones I like to use a lot. Um, and because they're out, I use them. Anyway, back to these pencils. I did a lot of tests on these. We're going to go through them. Um, I'm just going to try to give you mostly facts. I'm not going to try to be biased. I always try to be unbiased, but I've let you know I like softer pencils. Um, so hopefully that uh, you can take what I say with a grain of salt and you can decide whether these are for you or not. Um, so one thing I wanted to mention was that they sharpen really well. I didn't have any breakage. I've been using my new um, pencil sharpener here, which I'll be reviewing this eventually. I like it, except I don't find that there's any different. It's supposed to go dull, a blunt point or a sharp point, and I don't see any difference when I when I sharpen it. But I will show you. They sharpen really well. And uh, that's with a mechanical. And you can see I get a really nice smooth point. And I get a really nice curl when I sharpen with a like my Coom 2 point. Now, I did just change my blades here. In this a sharpener last week because it was getting kind of kind of choppy but you can see you get a really nice satisfying um, curl from that so if you like to do resin you could uh you could save those put them in your resin but you can get a really nice fine point I didn't have any breakage although um, on the electric sharpener I do have to I do recommend that you kind of keep your hand nearby so when it's starting to release the pencil, you can lift it up so it doesn't snap the little point. Um, and I did run into that, the snapping of the tiny like little point on the end when I was drawing, but um, it's really fine. And I couldn't, it, did, it didn't seem to, that pencil sharpener didn't seem to give me the blunt point that it, um, that it suggested. Now I did not swatch them all. There's a lot of um, reviewers out there that are swatching them all and you can go and avail yourselves to their videos. Um, but, uh, the reason why I didn't swatch them all, let me, get, let me show you, and I'll show you on a dark one so you'll have the best chance of actually reading those, these numbers. Um, I can't read the tiny print on the pencil very easily, and I know I would have a migraine by the time I was done swatching just trying to like write down the numbers, and that's the, uh, there's like a color code and a, there's an alphanumeric over here, and then over here is the actual number of the pencil, but it's stamped in, and um, some viewers suggested rubbing ink in there, but I... I really don't think it would help that much because, you know, or maybe if you had a white paint for like the darker colors and dark paint for the darker ones, I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that. That's way too much. That's, that's way too much work to put in a set of budget pencils. Um, but anyways, I do like that they that the names are big enough. I guess if I wanted to bother writing out the names, I could do that. But um, I the only reason I swatch regular color pencils is for reviews. I don't use the swatches in my own um, in my own work. I just look at the leads, and that's how I that's how I um, work with color pencils. But I did swatch out. I pulled out the pastel tones and I swatched them on black paper and also on white paper. This is just Blick sulfite paper, and this is the rough side of Canson Me Tints to give it the best chance to grab some of that color. And um, the pastels definitely are a little bit. Um, they're muted on the black, they're opaque, but they're not highly pigmented. So let me just show you really quick. I've got my Pro Colors here, and uh, they're, fair, they're, fair, they're harder than these pencils, but I thought they'd be kind of comfortable. So this is like the Pro Colors on black, and you can see how much pigment is in there. Um, now granted, they're not all pastel tones, but you definitely get a bigger punch uh, like from Pro Colors. Now these are the brights. Some of the brights, I just picked out some random brights and colored them on the black just to see. And the Pro Colors, you know, that's just, Pigment wise, they're they're not as pigmented as like a as a higher end pencil. I just wanted to make sure that's absolutely clear. 
So after I did the more pastel colors, I did the metallics there and the metallics here. The metallics actually were pretty impressive. I didn't find any of these pencils to be scratchy. However, I did find like the application them to be kind of streaky sometimes. And like when I'd go to like layer up and mix them because I, I tend to, to um, do more mixing than layering. This, these are definitely better for layering. I will tell you that if you're a, um, if you're an artist that likes to layer up, to build up colors rather than uh, burnish and mix. These are better for layering than for mixing and for burnishing. Um, uh, what was I saying? I didn't f notice any scratchiness, but I did notice streakiness in some colors. It's almost like the um, like there was not enough pigment in this in the pencil for it to spread out smoothly. And I'll show you a test I did with that in a minute. Um, and then again, there's some brights versus the brights here. Now the colors are soluble with water. They're not like a watercolor pencil where they're going to completely wash out, but they are soluble with water. And um, and I know that's been a big thing, but you know what? You're going to see in a minute. I tested a lot of my budget pencils, and most of them were. If they said they were oil-based or, or oily, then they were kind of water-soluble. I'm trying not to be negative. Um, so I hope that doesn't come across as negative. I think there's there's a, there's a pot for every lid. There's a lid for every pot, right? What am I saying? Uh, so these might be for you. Um, so I definitely don't want to want to appear negative in this. I just, just being honest, friends. Um, and then I did, uh, you know what? I will say there's actually a decent white in this set. There's two whites because like I mentioned, you get the, there's the two boxes of 260 colors and each box is fairly balanced. Well, one box has a uh, white called um, Tofu and the other box is a box called Brilliant White. So let me see if I can, the Brilliant White is uh, ends in a two, the, their number ends in a two. So that would be the box that has all the even numbers. I've taken them out of the box. I don't remember which one, but you could see if you were looking to order just one of the boxes, get the one with the even numbers just because that white is so much better. Um, like this is, uh, I'll just watch them real quick. So this is Tofu. And that's your typical, you know, lame white pencil. I'll bring it up for the camera in a second. And this is Brilliant White, which is a bit more opaque and uh, brighter and softer. Okay. And that's a Prismacolor White and that's the Brilliant White there. So just to, um, just to give you an idea. There is actually a decent white, but that you're probably going to use that up, so you'll be buying a Prismacolor probably to go to go with it. Um, I did a layering test. Now, granted, like I mentioned, um, I don't love layering. I actually I like laying, layering with the Pro Color pencils, but for the most part, I like to mix and burnish. That's why I love the Prismacolors. That's why I love the Derwent Light Fast because you almost you're in there mixing like it's really visceral, and I love that feeling. Um, personally, you know, like I always say, I'm not a proper colored pencil artist. I don't like to do all that time consuming layering. I like to just jump in and get into it. Um, so if you're like that, these probably aren't for you, but if you like to build up layers and layers and layers, they might be for you. So here I did some layers. Now, what I don't really care for is how streaky, um, they, they go down like the first four layers are really quite streaky. Then when you get to layer five and six, you are building up a better intensity, but then, um, I feel like you have to start adding more pressure. And then at seven, I felt like I kind of maxed out how much I could put down. Um, and I was also putting out some effort. And I feel that if you had arthritis or some sort of strength issue, then that would be problematic. That I think that would uh, fatigue you quite, um, you know, quite quickly if you're working over a large area. If you're coloring in like a tiny little spot on like a rubber stamped image or a coloring book page, you probably wouldn't notice that. But um, you can't really color a small area with a really light pressure, I wouldn't imagine, at least with rubber stamping. I don't, um, I don't do the coloring books, but I do rubber stamp. And I would think that you would still need to get in there with some pressure to really fill the tooth of your paper. But I don't know, you, you would know better than me if you were an artist that does that. So then I also did a blending circle because I always do my blending circles just to kind of get a feel of how I usually try to pick a few shades of teal. Um, to get a feel how, how it is next to other brands that I already have. And I was pretty happy with the blending circle. Now, actually, I'd used a little water and went over there and smoothed it out. Um, and that's the control, the Prismacolor, and that's a Brute Fooner Square. And then over here, I did it on the black, too, the same color, so you can see how you really lose that pigmentation on the dark. Um, it's, they're, they're, they're not terribly transparent. I mean, they do show up on black, and I rarely work on black with... Uh, colored pencils because they do fight it, fight it a little bit, no matter what brand you're using. But I mean, if you look at the Prismacolor versus the Brute Fooner, now Prismacolor is wax and Brute Fooner is oily, um, so that would cause a little bit more 
transparency. Wax pencils are more opaque in general. That was the Brute Funer Square also as a control group. The Brute Funer Square, they are a little waxier and they did hold up a little bit more. And I do, I really like the Brute Funer Square. So I was hoping that these were going to be the square pencil, the square equivalent to the squares and they're not. Um, they're different. I, I guess I shouldn't say equivalent. I, they're not the same is what I should say. Uh, because you might love these and you might not like the squares. I don't know. I don't know you. I don't know you what, what you like in your pencils. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so I just I was just trying to be really painstaking here because I didn't want to miss something, you know, I didn't want to like not do a test and be like, ah, they're perfect for that. And I, you know, I totally missed out. Um, and then I have some pro, I'm going to get the pros and cons after I think. So I'm just going to set that aside. So then what I did was um, I decided, well, I didn't, I, I was not trusting my memory. And so I was looking at my, my, my blending, blended circles here and I did a, did the teal blending circle and I was feeling like there was just was something missing and I wasn't trusting my memory on these, but I didn't want to just redo this um, exercise. I decided that I would do a tricolor mixing circle. And that's what I did here. And I didn't do all my brands, but I did a lot of them that I felt were the most similar to these uh, Brute Fooner color barrel pencils. And um, so that's a Brute Fooner there. And that's, uh, and this is the control I did at the end. Cause sometimes, you know, you get you do one test and you start using all these other pencils and then you almost forget what the first one is. So I came around and did a control at the end. Um, and those are the Brute Fooner squares. Now, one thing after I did all the blending, I thought, you know, um, I'm going to add water and I'm going to see how these bleed. And those, the Brute Fooners in the set of 520, they really smeared with water. In fact, I tried to keep it in the, in the, um, in the thing there, but I can grab a brush and just show you really quick. Because after all, I was trying to not keep it too, you know, they, they do blend out pretty easily. Not like a watercolor pencil. They're not going to blend that much, but they do blend quite a bit. Um, the Brute Funer squares really didn't. I mean, some colors, and I did do a swatch with them, and I tested them all with water. And I did notice a few colors on the squares would uh, move like 89... There was a couple of the lavenders that would move a little bit, and some of these really dark earthy reds would move a little bit, but overall, they would stay put. And I noticed the square stayed put, and you can see that kind of, you know, waxy finish on it. And the, um, the brew from around didn't. The old, art, uh, I'm sorry, the 2019 Artesas didn't move with water. I know they've come out with a newer formulation since then. The old Artesas did move. The Starjoy Delis um, were water soluble. The um, Mark Art Nionis were semi. I haven't really done a lot with those two brands, so I'm not going to go into my thoughts on those yet until I've had a chance to really put them through their paces. The Castle Arts were water soluble. The Magic Flies were water soluble. The Cezanne were not quite as water soluble as others, but they were somewhat. I really kind of scrubbed them out just to see. The Schriptofarben were water soluble. Um, the Art and Fly was water soluble. So. Yeah, the uh, the only ones that really resisted the water well were the Brute Furner Squares in the 2019 version of Arteza. The other ones were either quite water soluble or semi water soluble. And here I scribbled them out and then I brushed over water with the same degree of uh, force with the same brush. And you can see the squares really didn't move and the rounds did. So it's not the same lead. So a lot some people have said they're the same lead in the squares and the rounds with the barrels that are colored all the way through. That's not the case. They're not, at least not with what I received. I mean, who knows? Maybe they changed formulations between when I got mine and somebody else got theirs, or maybe this is a different formulation in the size sets you get. So that's, you know, that's the other thing. Something that I've noticed with budget pencils is that um, you could buy a set of 48 and love them. And then, oh, I'm going to buy the set of 120 and then they're completely different pencils. So like when I had that set of 72 Arteza, the old ones, they were water soluble. And I got the set of 120 in 2019 and they were completely water resistant. So sometimes different sets, sizes in any budget art supply can be completely different materials. So that's also something to consider when you're considering buying a product. What size did the reviewer look at? Make sure you look at a review that's reviewing the same size as what you have. Because even when you're on Amazon, they can have several different products under the same listing. And all those reviews are together. So it can be very confusing. And I also recommend that if you are if you are shopping on a platform that has reviews, that you look at the most recent reviews. Um, because the 
you know, it can change. It can, it can change. The formulation can change their, um, they could change suppliers and then the product used to be one way and now it's another for better or for worse. So you do have to have a little buyer beware when you're looking at non-legacy brand art supplies. And I'm not saying they're bad. There's definitely a place for these, but, um, but I just want to make sure that you're aware because even though these are budget pencils, the price really isn't budget friendly when you're looking at a set of 520. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, so, but, you know, vibrancy wise, I would say they're very comparable with all these other, um, uh, budget brands. I would say they're, they're remarkably average. They're kind of, you know, they're kind of average or kind of what you would expect for like a pencil in the like 20 to 30 cents per pencil range, I would say. All right. So I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to make sure I get my other thing out on top so I don't forget about the pros and cons because I do want to get to that. Um, oh, one thing I want to mention that most of these bargain pencils that market themselves as oil pencils or oily are going to move with water. So keep that in mind if you use fixatives or anything like that. So the first thing that I did with these uh, after those tests was I did a drawing on Stonehenge paper because that's kind of my overall all around paper. I usually use these for tests, so it will give me a good apples to apples comparison. And um, I chose a leaf. I probably should have shown something with better colors, but, um, you know, it was okay. It wasn't like, it's kind of like, you know, you go to your favorite restaurant you sit down, you have a glass of wine, you have a beautiful dinner, you know, that's Derwent Light Fast is a, is a meal at your favorite restaurant. And then there are days where you just run into Subway and you grab a veggie delight and you call it a day. That's kind of what we have here. These, these pencils feel like necessity. They don't feel like luxury. They definitely feel like necessity. They will get the job done, but they're not, um, they're, you're not going to write home about them. Um, but anyway, I did, I did the leaf here. It was all right. They layered up reasonably well. The background is with marker, um, just to give me a little contrast. Um, they layered reasonably well. They, they were okay. They didn't, uh, I didn't get a great feeling using them. I didn't feel like these are awesome. Game changer. So different. They, they were very average. Um, I did a little, uh, little gradient here with some of the vibrant tones. Um, they did not blend that great. They're definitely a layering pencil. So, I mean, the gradient looks fine, but you definitely can see the seams. I did not get a really good blend like I would with like the Chroma Flow or the Color Soft or the Prismacolor. So there's that. And that's, that was also just one of those wheels I did with uh, just, to, that was before I did the, actually, yeah, I did this before I did the other wheels, I think. I can't remember. I think so. Um, and then I thought, well, these are firmer than the pencils I usually use. So let me compare them with um, the Pro Color because I just reviewed those. And I applied these the same. I tried to choose colors that were similar, but it was um, oddly <laughs> difficult. Um, and I definitely have less grain in my Pro Color my pro color uh, swatch. Now these are a more luxury pencil. They're more expensive. They're artist grade. Um, and I definitely got more blending here. No, I was layering with the pro color. I found it was more seamless than with the brute Fruiner, which I ended up with more of a, a streakiness, a streakiness that I mentioned earlier on. I got that streakiness when I was, um, when I was building up and you get to the point of saturation much earlier with the brute Fruiner than with the pro color. I just thought they might be worth comparing, even though that's a, it's not really a fair comparison. Those are much more expensive per pencil pencil, but um, since they were firmer, I thought I would compare them with a firmer pencil. They are nowhere near as firm as the Pro Color, just FYI, but um, I wanted to do that test. I wanted to be thorough here. Um, then I did, because I did a, um, an example with the Brute Funners on a one of these watercolor paper, um, Altenew, the Altenew watercolor coloring book. Um, these are for card makers. And so I colored this in with the pencils. I think there's probably three layers here. Uh, it was all right, but I was definitely getting some fatigue in burnishing. Um, it did feel a little streaky and it was not as nice as coloring with the Brute Furner squares. It wasn't as nice as coloring with a professional pencil. Like you really wouldn't expect it to. It looks fine, but I think you would get some fatigue if you had arthritis and you were looking to get your pencils for coloring images similar to this, similar to to this size. Now I generally find that the budget pencils perform better on a slightly textured paper like a watercolor paper, like a cold press watercolor paper I should say. But um, yeah, I did not I did not enjoy coloring with them, I guess. I, I mean the results are fine, but I didn't enjoy coloring with them. Oh, by the way, these will respond with either a wet brush with water or odorless mineral spirits. There's really not a benefit to using one over the other. Um, they both work very similarly. Although I do find that water actually kind of wants to pick up 
the uh, lift up the pigment, so Autolus Mineral Spirits might just kind of mush it around more than actually try to pick it up, although they both will pick it up to an extent. Now I did the same little strawberry, one on just tone tan drawing paper and one on, um, on sanded paper. I did not like using it on the sanded paper, which I was very surprised because I thought I might really like it on the sanded paper because I was feeling like I was struggling to get the color down on smoother paper, but it was kind of gummy feeling on the, um, on the sanded paper, kind of like a softer wax pencil is, which um, I like sanded paper. I like wax pencils. I don't like them together, but um, like I love the pro color on this paper, but I didn't like this on that paper. It was just kind of gummy and didn't, didn't feel great. Um, and there's on the tone tan strap more smooth sketch paper. And that was fine. That was all right. I mean, it got the job done. That's, that's pretty much how I feel with these pencils. They, they get the job done. They're, um, they're fine, but uh, I don't know if I necessarily recommend them unless, um, well, we're going to get into that. So the pros and cons. The pros, they sharpen very well. The lead is quite centered. Like if I just randomly pick up a big handful of, of pencils and show you, you can see on the end, the, uh, the leads are very well centered. The leads are 3.3 millimeters. The um, body is 7.5 millimeters. They're not a skinny pencil. They're right, they're an average pencil. They're not like skinny, like some budgets are actually a little too skinny and it doesn't give you protection for the lead. Didn't have any breakage. The, the metallics and pastels are very nice. They're quite soft for, um, for metallics and pastels. Great selection of colors, obviously, you have 520, although a lot of them are very similar. Like if I, if I pull out, um, well, I could pull out any of them, but I mean, there's so many like peach shades in here that are just barely discernible. There's so many um, similar greens. There's just so many similar blues. So if you use one up, I mean, just grab the next one that's close to it. There's no open stock. Um, we'll get into the cons in a minute. Um, it works with odorless mineral spirits or water and the point lasts quite a long time with the exception of working on sanded paper the point will last quite a long time while you're working on it now the cons um no open stock i didn't really write that down because it kind of goes without saying well on these budget pencils that there's not going to be open stock available um they uh, have a lot of near identical colors they're harder than some of the other budget pencils so it just depends on what you like i guess i shouldn't put that as a con because it's a personal preference um and they're also inconsistent in pigmentation and transparency some colors are much more uh, pigmented uh some are streaky and some are smooth um i didn't notice any scratchiness but i did notice some streakiness and obviously your pastels are going to be more opaque but they almost lack pigmentation if they're more opaque it's kind of uh, it's kind of strange what I think these would be best for, I think these are going to be best for classroom use if you're like a middle school teacher. Not, I wouldn't say little kids because like I wouldn't use these in a daycare. Who knows what the barrels are painted with. Um, I wouldn't trust it. But like if you're in a situation where, you know, you're putting this out on a table, they might get dropped. Um, they're going to withstand droppage much more than a Prismacolor. They'd be a great classroom or like adult center type of pencil, um, with the exception of like, you know, they are hard to lead and they could, you know, cause problems with people with arthritis. I would say good for a rubber stamping where you're not really going to mix colors, where you might rather have a variety of colors rather than trying to mix in tiny little areas where it'd be impractical. And also for that reason, good for coloring books. Um, also good for collectors. Sometimes people just want to have that unusual supply. I can totally understand that. Um, so if you're a collector and you want something unique, that's definitely the biggest color pencil set I've ever seen. Um, who knows, maybe somebody will come up with a thousand pencils, but uh, that's definitely a unique collection. So if you're a collector, they make a nice decoration if you want to um, like decorate your studio with something. And they're also, they'd also be kind of handy as like a color tool. Like you could pick out the pencils and you could help, you could play around with them to help you select colors for projects. Um, so kind of just using them as like a Pantone. Um, deck and man pantone decks are expensive a pantone deck would cost more than that um or for a photo prop like if you do photos for instagram you can use those for a photo prop they're very pretty you can find exactly the colors that you want for that but as far as practical colored pencil use i don't really think they are the best choice now let's talk about the price because even though these are a budget pencil meaning they're about 20 to 30 cents a pencil you're getting 520 of them. So this is not going to be a $30 set of pencils. Um, and so when you're thinking about that investment, you might want to consider other ways you could spend that kind of money. Um, I was looking at the, on AliExpress at the place that sent me these pencils and they are charging $86 currently today, the day I'm recording for one of the boxes like this, because you can buy one box you can buy them separately or you can buy them as a pack and save a couple bucks, I think. Um, 
So one box was around $86, and then the set of two to get all 520 pencils was $157.53. And they have a regular price of $267. It's crossed out. Now, I don't know. Um, I never ordered on AliExpress, I have to be completely honest with you, and this is not a set I personally would have purchased, unless just it was such an overwhelming desire from viewers to have a review of these. Um, this is something I would have passed on, to be honest. Uh, so when you're looking at spending that kind of money for colored pencils, you may be better served by, and I, and I honestly think you will be better served by choosing a more legacy art brand, uh, a more professional pencil, because you can afford a set of professional pencils for that amount. Um, and you have the variety of choosing exactly what you want from, do you like a hard pencil? Do you like a soft pencil? Do you want a pencil that is light fast? Um, of course, you'd have to do with fewer colors if you wanted a light fast line, because they're more expensive. But you could totally pick what you wanted um, and get a higher quality product that was going to be more enjoyable to color with. So I would just think about that before plunking down a lot of money on the budget sets. Now, for instance, um, like an, an my budget set purchasing tends to be um, because things have been requested, uh, viewers have requested a review, and if I've got like a, a dozen people asking me to review a product, chances are I'll, I'll, I'll buy it if it's not too expensive, if I think it's not total junk. Um, and so I bought a few sets during Prime Day. I bought the Mark Arts and I bought the uh, Schriptor Farbens and the, um, the, well I bought the Star Joy a couple days earlier, but they were all they were down, they were on sale for like under $30, so I decided to grab those because they had been, I had had so many requests for reviewing those. Um, but I'm looking at that and it's like, man, that's, um, let's see, that was probably around $80 I spent on budget pencils where I could have spent that money and gotten a small set of like Luminance pencils from Karen Dosh, a set that I really want to, a brand that I really want to try. Um, so think about when you're looking at the budget pencils, and I'm not saying don't buy them because I definitely think there's a place for them, think about um, how many of these budget sets have you tried, and if you're still looking to buy more budget sets, is it because you love them, or is it because, well, that one wasn't quite right, well, I'm going to try another one. Um, because you're probably better off to just go for the, the professional pencil that you think you're really going to enjoy. That's just my the, my humble opinion. Now, obviously the price is going to fluctuate on this depending on who you buy them from. Um, I think I, I just did a quick search on AliExpress and I did see a variety of prices between like a hundred and you know two hundred dollars. So there's a lot of fluctuation there. And but I'm you know what I also get kind of confused when I'm looking there because they'll show like prices at like fourteen dollars, but like that's a smaller set and it's just it's kind of confusing I find. Um, so just make sure you're buying what you want to be buying because I I find it confusing because I've never ordered there before. And they'll probably pop up on Amazon as well in the future once they become more popular. And I'm not sure who, who was selling them on Amazon. They popped up for a hot minute and then they were gone. And I'm not saying if you if you could buy these at a, at a, at a low price, I think there are definitely reasons to get them. I think they're going to be really cute as far as like, oh, I want to choose some pretty colors for my next, my next greeting card. Oh, look, these colors are really pretty together. I think that's a really fun way to use these pencils, kind of like you would use, um, you know, color swatches, kind of using the barrel colors, because the barrels are actually painted pretty, um, you know, there is a little bit of difference between every barrel color. You can't trust the barrel color uh, to select your colors. You really want to look at the lead, and I noticed in some of the darker colors where they look really dark, but then you um, you color with them and then not, they're not the color you would expect. Like if I pick up this, it looks like a really dark navy. Let's see, is it really, oh, it is actually a dark teal color. You know, so those really dark ones can be a little bit tricky to de to discern what they are, but the, you know, I just figured swatching, unless I'm going to write down the name, which I'm not going to do, which I would recommend. If you are going to buy a set like this, you probably would want to write down the name if you, if you want to swatch, unless you're eagle-eyed and you can read that little imprint on there. Um, yeah, I, I think using them as a color picking tool would be fun. Would I buy this to use it as a color picking tool? Probably not. I actually have an old, um, an old like Sherwin Williams paint fan chip thing that I can use for that if I want to. Um, but you know, hey, it's cute. It's I can use it as a decoration. Would I spend one hundred and fifty seven dollars on it? No, personally, I would not. Um, I didn't particularly enjoy coloring with them because I prefer softer pencil. Um, so I just wanted to, I just, I, I don't know, I guess I would be, I would feel very irresponsible if I encouraged you to purchase a big set like this and spend the kind of money that you would spend on a, a luxury, I don't even say luxury, just a legacy brand. Because if you buy a Prismacolor set, if you buy any of the Derwent sets, any of the Caran d'Ache sets, um, 
any, I think probably also, uh, they're a little harder to find in America, but like um, even like the, the Koh Noor and the Lyra sets, you can get open stock on those. Um, in America, it's very easy to get Prismacolor open stock and any of the Derwent products open stock and Caran d'Ache open stock. So when you do use up a color, you buy that color. You don't buy that whole set again. Whereas if you're using budget pencils and use up a few of the colors, you've used up all the reds, you're either got to buy um, a professional brand, which would probably be a smart choice, really, uh, but they might not work with your other budget colors, or you've got to buy that set again. So unless you, if you are a high user, I think it does make more sense to buy um, a brand where you can replace the individual pencils. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a novelty. Bottom line, it's a novelty. It works. You can color with them. Um, I wouldn't say it's going to be the most pleasurable experience. I would say, you know, if you want a budget brand of pencil, go with the Brute Funer Squares. They are so smooth and pigmented and blendable, but that's also the the quality that I like the best in, in pencils. So you also got to take that with a grain of salt. If you know somebody that uses pencils that has a style more like what you enjoy doing, it'd be make more sense to take their advice over my advice. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to be really, um, really, really thorough. They're very average when it comes to the decent budget brands. Um, you're just getting a lot more of them. And they're they're pretty. They're pretty because they're colored all the way, through, like the barrels are completely one color. I think that kind of looks nice. But um, if you already have the older Arteza, the older Arteza, um, if you already have Star Joy, they felt very similar to the Star Joy. Um, any of these, I, I, I don't think there's a big enough difference to justify that unless you just want that oodles and oodles and, and lots and lots of colors. A lot of the colors are similar. You're really, you know, if you're mixing and blending them together, you really don't need all those transitionary colors. But if you had a classroom and you had a bunch of people that were all going to be coloring together, yeah, it, it, it would make sense. I don't know. I guess I probably had higher expectations than I should have for these. I was just so excited because I really, really liked the 120 Brute Funer set. And, um, and I was hoping that it was going to be the same leads in those pencils. But unfortunately, it's not. Um, and I think it's probably the biggest question that people are going to have when they're seeing this set. Am I going to get 520 of the same quality pencils as the Brute Furniture Squares? And and no, at least not the set that I got. I do think that, that the metallics will be fun to use on some black paper, maybe as like borders around cars or on scrapbook pages. But um, yeah, they might even offer those individually as their own product too. So I, I, I think that it's, it's a lot. I think that it's... Um, it's probably not the best way to spend $150 unless, you know, you're looking for those photo props or, you know, you want a decoration in your craft room or you just, you just like to collect supplies and it's a unique enough thing that, um, that it deserves a spot in your collection, which, hey, people collect coins and baseball cards and, um, and pottery. So I'm not going to judge what you choose to collect. I'm not going to judge you, um, either way, if you, if you choose to buy them or you choose to skip them. I just want to put the information out there so you can make the best choice possible. So with that, I'm going to bid you adieu. I hope you enjoyed this review. And um, like I mentioned, lots of other people are reviewing this. If you want to see swatches, you want to see other people's opinions, by all means, before you spend money on a product, you should get a few ideas, a few different um, opinions on a product, because not everybody has the same preferences or background or hobbies that you might have. So it just makes sense to see what other people have to say. So with that, thanks so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this review. Um, there's a tutorial for making the pencil storage rack on my channel. Um, it's great for storing all kinds of pencils, not just these. You could probably fit all of your pencils in them <laughs> from different brands, and that'd probably be a great way to make sure you use them more often. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.